All right, this is a strength of materials problem where we have a rectangular bar, which is shown right here, and we have a centric axial force P and a horizontal force QX that are applied at point C up here. Now also at point A, we have a strain rosette, a 45 degree strain rosette that is placed on its surface. And this rosette gives us the following uh, measurement, E1, E2, E3, right here. We also know E and the nu, which is from Poisson's ratio. They want us to find the value of force P and the force uh, QX. Okay, first let's uh, help, us help ourselves better understand what's going on. At, uh, I'm going to make a cross section down here at point A. And this is, uh, this drawing represents whatever is left from the ground, let's say, up to point A. And the cross section. So let's first draw a state of stress right here at point A, where the rosette uh, is located. And let's see what kind of forces are we dealing with. So right here, this is where my strain rosette is. I'm going to draw a square so we can mark our state of stress on it. So now let's take a look at what's happening. In This will be my x direction. This will be my y direction. So in the y direction, let's start with the y. What do we have? We have a force P that is an axial force pulling straight up, right? So we can mark that going up and down the reaction, right? Okay, now from the side, uh, left and right in the x direction, do we have anything squeezing or pulling on this? There's nothing. So on this side and this side, we do not have axial forces. Now on top, as we did our cross section at point A, this QX is pushing the top of our uh, square here, pushing it this way. So therefore, we can mark that we have a shear stress this way. Let's write up all the other components that would come with a shear stress that's going in this direction, uh, head to head, toe to toe. This is just how we write our st state of stress. And now we can tell how is our stress structured in this material at point A. This is how my point A looks like. This is, this is uh, P and this is QX. There you go. Now before we continue, let's have an overview of what is happening in this problem. So we have this rectangular rod or whatever it is and somebody wants to do some measurements right so therefore they placed a 45 degree rosette on it right right the x and y direction. So this rosette is gonna give us some kind of numbers it's gonna measure whatever's happening and that's the values that we are given here E1, E2 and E3. So from the rosette we are getting strain measurements. We're gonna get the strains in the system. Now from formulas that we learn we are able to go from strains to oh, stray, there you go. strains to the stress in the system. Right? Now again from formulas that we know, from here, we are able to go to calculate our forces. So, just an overview of the game plan. Strain to stress to forces. This is what we're going to be doing. Okay, right now I wrote down here uh, my strain 1, strain 2 and 3 in a way that I can recognize it or use it in my formulas easier. So, my 1 will be my x, my 3 will be my y, and the 2 will be E45. And this way when I use my formulas it's going to be easier so I don't get lost or accidentally make a mistake. Now, we have our axial or normal strains 
right here they are given so now let's go ahead and calculate our shear strain I'm gonna use this formula which is a monster we learned it in a, our book so you guys can recognize it and from here in the special case where we have a 45 degree we can plug it in and we will be able to solve for the shear strain this way okay it simplifies down to this formula so this is what I'm using here I'm gonna plug in the values that I have and I'm able to calculate my shear strain which is 340 microns in this case now the next set of formulas that I'm gonna be using is related to stress we are dealing with a three-dimensional object here so therefore we're gonna use Poisson's ratio these are the three main formulas that we can recognize and uh, for multiple multi axial loading and from these if you want pause the video and you can uh, check this out he, from here we can group them up and as a system of equations we can go ahead and solve for uh, sigma x and sigma y okay pause the video and take a look at it if you would like now from here here it is my calculations for this problem sigma x and sigma y the formula that i just showed cal pu plug in our values and we are able to find uh, the values that belong here in the x direction we have zero in the y direction we have 5800 psi now in the y direction we see we are dealing only with p p is an axial force therefore we have axial stress sigma equals p over a force over area so we can go ahead and use this to solve for p area times stress plug in our values and we can go ahead and find our first answer for the value of p which is 69.6 kips okay next up we need to calculate qx for this we're gonna use transfer shear from here we can see that we have to calculate v but at this point in this formula we would have two unknowns we have v and tau so before we use this formula we're gonna go ahead and use two other formulas the modulus of rigidity we're gonna find g and then shear stress gonna give us tau so first up we're gonna use g we're gonna calculate g by e over 2 times 1 plus nu nu is given to us right here 0 0.30 so plug in we find it from here we can calculate our shear stress which is after plugging in we find the value of 3791 psi now we found our shear stress so finally we can come back and use our transverse shear formula we're gonna go ahead and solve for v and equals it times tau divided by q now what else we don't know we don't know i we don't know t and we don't know q but it's easy to calculate i is the moment of inertia it's a we're dealing with a rectangle so fairly straightforward we can go ahead and calculate it for q equals a times y bar again we say fairly straightforward we can go ahead and calculate it 9 and t is given as 2 from our drawing right here now we have all that we need so we can go ahead plug in into our v which will be our qx calculate it and we are able to find our second value right here 30 point three kips 